Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas. This is how to make a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 7. So this time we're going to look at creating some crosshairs, we'll look at objectives and so we'll start piecing together a bit of a story here. We'll also look at a fade screen as well to fade into our game. So crosshairs work pretty much the same way as any other generic UI that we use and we can do a real simple one by going to game object, going to UI, raw image, and this will put a great big white blob, well, pretty much anywhere in the screen. But what we want to do is make sure we have it anchored, center, and then position is zero, zero. This ensures that the actual dot itself is center. Now at the moment, it's huge. If we press play, we can see it's absolutely huge. It's not much of a crosshair or cursor or anything. So what we're going to do is shrink it. Let's change the width to two and height to two. So it just becomes a little dot in the middle of the screen. Now obviously you can have this as big or as small as you want. And I'm just going to increase it maybe to four by four. Let's just see how this looks. Okay, so I'm going to keep it as four by four. Now what I intend to do here is I want the crosshair to be dynamic. So for example, when we come across something that we can open, pick up or activate or anything like that, we want the crosshair to kind of change just to give that little notification that something can be done here. And the best way we're going to be go about doing this is if we take the crosshair itself, this raw image, hold control, press D to duplicate. Let's move it outwards to about there. And I'm going to increase the height by, I don't know, how much do you think we should increase it by? Let's double it. So eight. And let's take that again. Hold control, press D to duplicate. Bring it to about there. That looks pretty, that looks okay. Let's just have a quick look at what that looks like. Okay, so it's obvious that what we need, need to do is pull it out a little bit more and obviously increase the size of it. So to do that, simple, let's have this as, let's try 16. So it's a bit bigger. And we're gonna take this one again, hold control, press D, bring it all the way across. You can pretty much measure it because you can see here that it looks fairly center. So obviously you can take as much time as you need. I might decrease the width to two and two just to keep it a little bit different. And I'm going to take that again, hold control, press D to duplicate. And I'm going to rotate on the Z axis by 90. And then I'm going to bring it over here and up to about there. And then hold control, press D to duplicate again. And let's bring it down to about there. Now, obviously you should take as much time as you need to. You should get your measurements perfect. I'm just doing this to kind of rush things along. But the last thing I'm going to do here, right click, create empty, empty game object, right click. Uh, oops, I didn't want to create another one. I want to rename this one, my apologies. And we'll just call it extra cross. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is untick that so it isn't active. And then we're going to put our other four crosshair images into that extra cross. So basically what's going to happen now is when we look at our door, these extra crosshairs will appear. And when we look away, they'll disappear. So let's do that. Let's go on our script, door cell open. And in here, we're going to set another variable. And you probably guess what the process of what's going to happen now. What we need to do is go public game object extra cross semicolon. And on mouse over, if the distance is less than or equal to two, we want them to appear. So extra cross dot set active true. Then obviously we want the inverse of that when the mouse leaves the area that where they would appear. So extra cross dot set active false semicolon, save the script. And now obviously we just need to set that extra cross as a variable on the door. So let's go to our door trigger right there, extra cross, and let's drag and drop straight onto there. So we play the game and you can see we have our normal little dot crosshair. We go to the door, 
and you can see that it appears. And like I say, you take your extra time. Mine's a little bit wonky because I'm rushing things so we can get things moving along, but I think that adds a nice little touch to the game with the crosshair that changes dynamically. So the next thing we'll do is let's create a little fade screen to fade into our game to kind of start giving us the feel of a story. So to do that, we're going to use animation again, like we have done previously. So make sure you're in the animation folder and we're going to use the um, UI raw image again. So double click and let's right click and rename. Let's call it fade screen in. And we want to set it black. Let's also anchor stretch. So we want it to stretch the entire screen. So then we can zero out every number here. So as it literally covers the entire screen. Now, obviously with the canvas, this white outline is the edges of the screen. So as you would imagine, if we press play now, we'd see complete black. So let's create the animation to fade it. So animation tab, create, and let's call it fade screen in save and let's press the record button obviously if you're using um, an early version of unity 5 you would not need to press the record button if you're using any, anything after i think unity 5.6 you would have to press the record button so if you're using 5.6 2017 2018 2019 whichever you would have to press that record button so first frame we need to set the keyframe to be maximum as 255 here so let's overwrite this 255 value in the alpha of the color. So we've just clicked here and we have the alpha here. So let's over type 255. Hit enter, close. And let's do this over a course of one second. So the 60th frame. So 60 here, hit enter. And we'll have the color change the alpha to zero. Hit the X and then press record to stop. So what we need to do now is remove the animator, right click, remove component. Then add component, add in our animation, change our size to one. And then we just need to drag and drop that fade screen animation clip onto there and into element zero. And we've done this before, so we know what we're doing here. We just need to change it to debug and then legacy and then set as once. So now when we press play, our screen will nicely fade into the game. Perfect. So what we'll do now is we will look into starting to create a story. So the idea of what we're going to go for at the moment, I think, is uh, let's let's imagine that we're stuck in this kind of room here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wall and just move it a little bit closer to the door. And I'll take this wall here. Hold control, press D to duplicate. Let's rotate by 90 degrees and let's just put it into position about there, I think. Let's bring it across there to about there. Okay, so we're stuck in this room, that's the idea, and we need to get out. So, what we'll do is we'll create a script which will allow us to start a sequence of events before the game itself starts. And there's a couple of things that we're gonna to have to do first. So let's get ourselves a text box. Again, real simple, game object, UI, text. Let's double click. I'm gonna F2 and just call it text box. So this text box is gonna be what our player says. So let's have it at, uh, let's have it anchored to stretch bottom down here. So we want it at the very bottom here. And let's have it as white. So let's change our text to white. And let's zero out the position on the X and the Y. And then just rearrange it into the position we want. So probably about there. I'll have it center alignment. I'll have it a bit bigger as well. So we'll have it maybe 22. And then let's stretch it outwards and upwards so we maybe have two lines if possible. Okay, so what I'm going to do is in this box I'm going to type something 
which we're going to have in the script. So we need to see if it's actually going to look okay. So let's have I need to get out of here. So this is what our character is going to say at the beginning. And that looks that looks fine. That should appear okay on the screen. So now what we'll do is we'll create a script. Head to our scripts folder. Let's right click, create a new folder, and let's have sequences. So right click, create C sharp script, and we'll call this one 001 opening. Okay, that's probably not a good name for a script actually. Uh, we'll call it A opening. So we'll kind of keep everything intact. So A opening, just to kind of make it be the first script in this particular area. So what we need to do is get rid of void update and any notes because we don't need them. But we do need three variables. Now we're going to add in a couple of extra little things in this script as we go along, but I'll explain what they're for. So public game object. So we're defining the game object and it's going to be the player semicolon. Next is going to be the fade screen because I think I'm going to turn that fade screen off just in case we need to use it again at any point or in case it decides to glitch out on us. So public game object and fade screen in semicolon and finally the text box that I, we've just created. So public game object Let's just call it text box. Nice and simple. So what's going to happen here is we need to disable the player from movement when as soon as the scene starts, just in case. But to do that, we actually need to tell the script that it needs to reference something. So up at the top where you've got these using system collections, generic Unity engine, what we need to do is underneath that, we need to do using Unity standard assets dot characters dot first person semicolon. So the reason we're using this is because we want to reference some components that are in the first person character that's in the standard assets. So without this declaration up here, we wouldn't be able to reference it. So we need to do the player which obviously is the first person controller dot get component and in spiky brackets we need to type the name of the component so if we look at it fps controller we have something called first person controller now this is what enables us to control the script at any given time we need to disable this as soon as the game starts up so first person controller close spiky bracket, open close bracket, dot enabled equals false, semicolon. Now what we need to do is use the I enumerator. Now if we go to our door cell open, you can see that we've only used voids there. Flame animation, we did use I enumerator there. So it's going to work on the same principle because we're going to use this yield return new in this opening scene, because it's like I say, it's gonna be a sequence of events that we can kind of pan through. So I'm gonna call it, let's call it scene player. So start co routine and in brackets, scene player, oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. So now let's create that scene player. I enumerator scene player open close bracket open curly bracket let's go down a few lines and close curly bracket and scene player will work just fine now so within this scene player what we're going to do is we'll allow our fade screen to occur over the course of a second and then after maybe one and a half seconds we set it as inactive and set a text box to say i need to get out of here so yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets 1.5 f because it's a float close bracket semicolon and then we'll do fade screen dot set active 
false. So that will set our fade screen in as inactive. And at that exact same frame, we'll get our text box to say, we need to get out of here. So text box dot. In fact, before we go any further, we should probably declare it up the top using unity engine dot UI semicolon. Remember, we used it in the door cell open script here because we referenced some um, UI within the script. Same principle applies here. Text box dot get component and it's breaky brackets text. Open close bracket dot text equals and in quotes we'll say I need to get out of here. Close the quote and semicolon and then we'll wait for two more seconds. So yield return new wait for seconds two semicolon and after that we will set the text box to be blank so the text basically disappears but the game object is still active so text box dot get component text open close bracket dot text equals double quote semicolon and at that exact same point we need to re-enable our game player to walk around. So the player dot get component open uh, spiky bracket and it's first person controller open close bracket dot enabled equals true semicolon and save the script. So if we head back to Unity, hopefully we should have no errors. Perfect. And if you have any problems, as always, head to the website, Downloads and Assets, Survival Horror Series, and you can download it there for free. So if we go to Game Object, Create Empty. So we've got this empty game object to store this opening sequence script. Right click and rename, and we'll call it Sequence Objects. And within there, Create another empty game object, right click, rename, we'll call it a opening sequence. And if need be, we can always modify this opening sequence script at a later date. So let's set the variables, controller and fade screen and the text box. What I might do actually is quickly rename this raw image to say cross hair. But I'll leave them raw images there because the base, the parent um, object in this should suffice as it is. So I'm going to save the scene there and let's press play and check this out. Perfect. So, and we're looking pretty good about now. So you can see that this is really coming together quite quickly and we're only in episode 7. So we'll leave this uh, episode there for now. Next time, what I'd like to do is we're going to create a story for when we get out of there. And I think what we'll do is we'll create a trigger when we get out there for another sequence that says, oh, there's an, a weapon on the table because we're going to start looking at weapons pretty quickly and then enemies and jump scares. So everything is really going to flow together and I'm quite looking forward to it. So guys, until the next episode, thank you very much for watching.